Praise the Lord, everybody. We certainly praise and thank God. We honor God for another Lord's Day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We also thank and praise God because this is Mother's Day, the day that we use to set aside to honor our mothers, our grandmothers, our godmothers, our spiritual mothers, and all the women who have poured into our lives. And so we welcome you to this day, this Sunday, and ask that you just come with us and worship with us, even as we recognize and honor the mothers and as we celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us go into prayer. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for this day. We thank you for your goodness and your loving kindness. We thank you for your mercies. Oh God, you have been merciful unto us. God, and we thank you, Lord we thank you we thank you for your goodness oh God we're coming before you God we're not forgetting oh God for a moment God our prayer list we are praying oh God we're interceding on behalf of this country God you said if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways you would hear from heaven you would forgive our sins and you would heal the land God we're asking for your healing God for the land for the people oh God in the name of Jesus uh, bring us back oh God on one accord bring us back into the temple bring us back into the fellowship so oh God we thank you and we praise you oh God touch the sick bodies oh God God those are on the front line God keep those oh God in the name of Jesus protect oh God in the name of Jesus and we magnify you we glorify you and we're thanking you for mothers God we're thanking you for their sacrifice. We're thanking you for all that they do, God. Bless mightily in the name of Jesus. Uh, we give you glory. We honor you. And we celebrate you, oh God, in Jesus' name. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Let's praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Our God is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. There's nobody like him in all the earth. Glory to God. Say, oh, 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 oh. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll 
One of the most important attributes of a good mother is that she freely gives out TLC, tender, loving care. The most important attribute of a mother is loyalty. I chose, well, I chose the attribute of loyalty because throughout life you go through trials and tribulations and sometimes nobody is there for you, but a mother with the attribute of loyalty will be the only one there for you on your side. The essential attribute a mother should have, in my opinion, is forgiveness. Forgiveness, probably not the most thought of, but when you think about it, in a relationship, in our relationship, things happen. Let down, disappointment, hurt. And I think that for a mother, like some of these occurrences with her children can cut deeper, hurt harder, if that's even a phrase. And they can be more difficult to handle. So a mother's ability to make choice to forgive, I think is an essential attribute. And I say choice because we all know that forgiveness is a choice. And so if a mother can choose to forgive her children for the things that may happen in their relationship, then I think that that opens the window and it gives opportunity to establish a, a strong, uh, growing, healthy relationship, one that can prosper with her children. The impact and influence of mothers should not and cannot be underestimated. Mothers are a pillar in the family. Mothers undergird, they support, they encourage, they inspire. God bless you and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. I'm Sister Townsville and I'm gonna highlight one attribute of a mother. And the attribute I selected is long suffering. It's actually one of the uh, fruit of the spirit. And it means, as we know, to go through your troubles with patience. And I'd like to add without complaining because truly that's the nature of a godly mother. And I can say that because I had one of the best. My mother went through difficult times and challenges and she never let it rock her. She was always there for us and she never showed exactly how hurt she was feeling going through her problems and troubles. I can say that because my mother had a child to pass away at six months and then another to pass away at age 21 and another at age 41. And then my father also died. But my mother never questioned God. You could never hear her say, God, why did you take my children? Or why did my husband die? But she continued on and showed us great strength in her, pers in her perseverance through trouble. So I just thank God for a godly woman who uh, instilled in us that long suffering doesn't mean that you're suffering long. It just means that you're waiting on the promise of God and you're going through whatever trouble it is knowing that he's going to bring you out. The most important attribute that uh, Mother Dandridge had is what I call action love. Carmen and I always knew our mother loved us. Her love was shown in the things she did. Mother took care of us in all avenues of our life. We always had a nice place to stay. We always had heat, water, and lights in our home. Mother worked hard. We never went without food, clothes, or personal items. We always had money for sport, games, movie, skating, proms, and social activities. Mother made sure that all our needs were met, many times sacrificing her needs for ours. But the best thing Mother gave us was introducing us to God and the church family. My mother loved Southern Missionary Baptist Church, and we loved it too. Mother allowed the church to love and nurture us. Also wisdom. I realized that I left home when I was 18. In those 18 years, mother had repeated over and over and over again about things of life. Mother continued to give advice and wisdom until she got sick. When I think about all the important things mother instilled in us, it was her love of God, which was the dearest to us. Mother left a legacy of love for God, his word, his people, and our family. Mother prayed often 
and studied the Bible daily. Mother read Christian books and wrote prayers and scriptures in several spiral notebooks. At the end of Mother's life, her love was action and hugs. She prayed, studied, wrote, and gave plenty of hugs to us and the granny kids. A motherly influence sometimes doesn't even come from your natural mother. Sometimes there's people that don't know their mothers or their mothers may have not really be a part of their lives, but you have to celebrate those women that have played that role in your life. Maybe it was your grandmother or your aunt or, you know, your spiritual mother that stepped in and filled that void. If that's the case, I, 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 I say support them and honor them and celebrate them for what they've done. In our church, for example, we have a mother's board that serves as a spiritual mothers for many people. And we thank and praise God that over the mother's board is our church mother. And the church mother plays a significant role in our church. The church mother supports the pastor and runs with the vision of the pastor. The church mother is supposed to be that tightest to woman, that woman of wisdom, and of knowledge and here at hallelujah temple we have a church mother second to none and i'm here to celebrate our church mother because she has been in and out of the hospital in this season but we thank god that god has kept her we thank god that god is strengthening her and we're believing we're sending words of healing to our own fabulous church mother mother tl Loggins. but there have been many church mothers in this season that have been afflicted and we're believing god for healing for the church mothers but on this day we certainly celebrate our church mother mother tl Loggins, a woman of wisdom great wisdom, love, and encouragement. Thank you, Jesus. How can I say thanks for the things you've done for me? to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels. 
a really great quality that I think when I you know think about my mom is that she is nurturing. Um, that's really what makes a good mother. I mean, it's very similarly to you know gardeners in that they take this really tiny seed and um, they nurture it, they foster that growth, they water it, and the hope and expectation of it growing into this beautiful picture that it wasn't there in the beginning. Um, and that's really the same with mothers. Uh, I know for certainty that a really good and nurturing mother is able to kind of foster and cultivate growth in you that can really be life-changing. I feel that one of the greatest attributes of a mother is to have that listening ear and lending hand. Because at times we all need that one person to listen and take in what we're saying instead of judging us. I feel that mothers have that special effect to be able to do that and help us do whatever it is just to listen and partake in what we're saying and hear us out and not just take our side but to help us do it instead of just saying what we're doing wrong or judging us about it. Someone once said, of all the special joys in life, the big and the small, a mother's love and tenderness is the greatest of them all. We thank God for mothers. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, yes, I do. about you every time I read about you every time I hear your name I start to smile every time the sun starts shining every time the wind starts blowing Feel your anointing, I start to smile. Let me take the time to say, I love you. Let me take the time to say, I care. Every time. Every time I think about every you, time I read about every you, time I read about every you, time I hear your name every time I hear your name I start to smile every time the sun starts shining every time the sun starts shining every time the wind starts every to blow time the Every time I feel your Every anointing, time I feel your anointing, I start to smile. Let me take the time. Let me take the time Hallelujah. to say, Lord, I love you. Let me take the time. To Let me take the time.
praise the Lord. We thank God for this wonderful Mother's Day. We thank God for every mother, any mother on any level, whether you are a godmother, whether you are the natural mother, a foster mother, uh, an adoptive parent, um, whether you are a good auntie that's active in the lives of others, a mother in Zion, a church mother, a natural mother, whatever that level may be, we celebrate you and salute you on this day. Some of you may have suffered the loss of your mother, and there are mixed feelings right now, and we know the Lord will comfort you, but it's good to have good memories of your mother and her influence in your life. There's no one like a mother. And what I would like to talk about for a moment today is uh, models of compassion. Mothers, models of compassion. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you and praise you for this day and thank you for this time and for this opportunity to bring forth your word. I pray that the words that I speak will be spirit and life, that it will minister to the needs and hearts of others, Lord, and that their faith will be ignited. They will be set on fire. Lord, move in their lives in a mighty way. Comfort them, strengthen them, encourage them, use them as influencers in these last and evil days, that they may be models of compassion like never before. And we praise you for the victory and we praise you for your great anointing even now in Jesus name amen in our society models are very highly regarded the fashion industry which generates billions of dollars in revenue each year through products ranging from jewelry to skin care hair care clothing all type of accessory they invest a lot of time and money to locate the right individual to market their products celebrities and athletes are often utilized to uh, due to their face recognition or their name recognition. Uh, but a bottle may become so well known, they become what is known as a supermodel. They, be, they get a celebrity status. And uh, in the fashion industry, when you're a supermodel, you're in high demand and even given exclusivity, that there may be a product that your name is exclusively associated with that. Now, that window of success in our society many times has to do with your age. And it's unfortunate that we honor youth so much and we have such an obsession with regards to youth that uh, a supermodel can outlive their usefulness to a particular uh, vendor or product because they're looking at the wrinkles in their skin or their age. But thank God that the kingdom of God is not based upon youthfulness. It's not based upon physical beauty exclusively. It's dealing with the beauty and the humility of holiness and, and the wisdom that God applies as we apply his word in our lives. And we can look at a variety of individuals in the Bible who were models for us in terms of what we can exemplify ourselves to do and to be. And uh, I thank God because um, a good model is someone you can follow after. We call that a role model. And uh, there are some people in the Bible, some of them are saved and some of them are not saved, but we can get something out of their lives and get something out of their choices. And, and one person I'm going to use today is someone who is not a normal model of compassion. This is a unique model of compassion. Uh, and we're going to deal with Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter is someone who we know was brought up in a polytheistic society, and yet she's a model of compassion because she chose to become a mother, an adoptive mother of a very unique and anointed little baby. The Bible lets us know in Exodus chapter 2, verses 5 through 10, the Bible says, And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her her maid to fetch, fetch it. And in case you don't know this story, Moses was born during a time where Pharaoh had put out a law to kill all the male children. Thank God that the midwives stood up against Pharaoh and they would deliver the boys and allow the parents to hide them for a season. And Moses' parents hid him for three months, but after three months, they couldn't hide him anymore. But they noticed something unique about him, special about him. The Bible said he was a proper child. The hand of the Lord was upon him. So, um, Moses' mother made a, 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 a basket and, and, and 
put, pitched it with pitch and tar and placed it among the reeds there uh, near the Nile River, probably at a location where she thought that perhaps Pharaoh's daughter may come because it will only be an Egyptian that could save uh, Moses at this point. Someone would have to look on him and determine that I'm going to identify with him. I'm going to emancipate his life. I'm going to adopt him. And the Bible says that as they, as her maidens were walking along the riverbanks, they saw the, the basket and they heard the child. And, and what's so important here, verse six, the Bible says, when she opened it, she saw the child and behold, the baby wept. Hallelujah. And she had compassion on him. The Lord touched her heart. Praise God. Now, the Bible didn't say the Lord touched her heart. Now, sometimes the Bible says he touched her heart. In this case, she had compassion. She felt a need and the desire to alleviate his pain and to and to, to dry his tears. She was moved to make a difference. And I thank God that mothers are models of compassion and and, and come come to, to, to deal with people's hearts and lives and to take those babies and nurture them. And there are a lot of different qualities of a good mother of a mother that we can follow. Mothers are careful. They just are not reckless in terms of what they do or give to that child, what that child can eat, where that child can go. Mothers are very careful in the nurturing of a child. They're, they're very gentle and supportive. They're warm and watchful. And, and, and Pharaoh's daughter took Moses and accepted him. She had compassion on him, praise God. And she said, this is one of the Hebrews children. She knew who it was. And then Miriam, his sister, spoke up and said, shall I get a nurse for you? Can I get a nurse? And this is so important because Pharaoh's daughter not only is going to defy her father's law, she's going to defy her father. She's going to identify with this child and choose to raise this child with all the privileges of a prince of Egypt. But also she affirms his heritage. She's not trying to assimilate him totally into being an Egyptian and forget that he's a Hebrew. She actually hires his mother. He hires Moses' mother, and Moses' mother will nurture him for a season. And I'm sure during that time, she sang him Hebrew songs. During that time, she told him the stories of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph, and the wonderful things God has done so that he would know who he really was and that the hand of the Lord was upon him. So the Lord allowed uh, Moses' mother to nurture him and be paid for it, and then we see Pharaoh. Pharaoh's daughter taking him into the palace. The Bible says, hallelujah, uh, Pharaoh's daughter said to Miriam, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and she said, because I drew him out of the water. Praise God. And so not only does she accept him into the palace, but now she's going to stand up. I'm sure she's going to have to let her father know where this boy came from. Amen. And she's going to identify with him and train him. And according to the word of God, as Stephen was sharing about Moses' great career, he was exceptional in word and deed. He was an outstanding prince in Egypt. God trained him up in those things. And God will use all of his training these 40 years in the palace to lay the foundation for the great leadership and the great leader he would be in the coming years. But we got to tip our hat to Pharaoh's daughter. She was willing to adopt. And we thank God for those adoptive parents, for those foster parents, for those godmothers, for those active aunts, for those individuals who are willing to give of their livelihood to influence the life of a child or children. Your compassion makes a difference. Your compassion can turn the course of their lives. Your compassion can create the perfect environment for them. Amen. Because many times they can be in an abusive environment. They can be in an environment where they're hated or put down. But when a person is loving and a mother is loving, they will speak words of hope and life and they will help that child to grow. Yes, they will have to discipline that child from time to time, but it's all done out of love. And we thank God for Pharaoh's daughter because she's amazing 
major instrument and conduit in Moses' life so that he will transition. He will now be able to live because under the law, he should have been killed. But now God is protecting him in the very house of the man who put out the, the hit, the man who put out the law. And God has him under that protective wing for 40 years until he will come and determine that I'm not Pharaoh's daughter. I'm actually a son of the Hebrews. Amen. But she's a model of compassion. And I thank God for all those who adopt, all those who are foster parents, all those who are willing to be surrogate parents, all those who are willing to be big brothers and big scissors, sisters and, and, and influence individuals in their lives. It makes a difference. And we should not try to hold back and hoard all of our riches and wisdom and experiences just for our own consumption. God wants to use us to impact an individual, to impact a life, to impact another generation. And she crossed cultural lines. She crossed all the lines you can think of. She crossed the economic line. She crossed, crossed the educational line. She crossed the cultural line. She crossed every line known to man. But compassion, love was the thing that caused her to reach out to that baby. Amen. And we praise God for that. And our second um, example is going to be Elizabeth, found in Luke chapter 1. Praise God. Elizabeth is the one who will become the mother of John the Baptist. And when I think about Elizabeth, I think about two things. Not only the miracle of a person who couldn't have children or natural birth, praise God, but I also think about the mothers in Zion and the spiritual mothers and the church mothers and those who are really major influences in the growth and the development of a child. The Bible lets us know that when Mary came to Elizabeth's house that the babe leaped in her womb and she was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied to Mary, the mother of Jesus, to let her know to believe those things that God has said. But also Elizabeth had backbone. Elizabeth loved the Lord. So even on the naming ceremony, on the day that John was supposed to be named, Zechariah could not speak. And everybody in the family and in the tribe and in the clan was thinking, this boy is going to be named Zach because his father's name was Zechariah. But she stood up and says, not so. She know what the angel said to her. She knew what God had spoken to her husband and what God had done in her life. And she said, his name is John. And they said, what? There's no John in your family. There's no lineage of John in your family. And then at that point, that's when Zechariah, his tongue was loosed and he began to prophesy and affirm that indeed his name is John and he's going to be a child of the highest and a prophet. But notice here in verse 80 of Luke chapter one, it says, and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the days of his showing unto Israel. Anytime you see in the Bible, a child growing and waxing strong, that's not on its own. It requires a mother's love. It requires a parent's direction. The Bible lets us know you should train up a child in the way that they should go, that when they're old, they shall not depart from it. And a nurturing mother, a, a mother who's affectionate, who's devoted, who's fond, who's kind, who's protective, who's sheltering, who's sympathetic and tender and affirming like Elizabeth was for John, she allowed him to embrace the promises of God, the responsibility of his calling in his life. He was a right and an anointed boy, but he can't grow unless he's in the right environment. And we as uh, we love those parents who will allow those children to explore various different things. And you know, sometimes children will jump from one thing to the next. One day they want to be a ballerina. One day they want to be a concert pianist. One day they want to be a soloist. One day they want to be that. But we got to invest in them and invest time in them and affirm them so they can find their voice and find their place. And certainly we want them to hear the voice of the Lord like John and seek to be an instrument for God and seek to please God and seek to do wonderful things for God. And I thank God that Elizabeth nurtured John so that John could grow and become an anointed, powerful prophet. In fact, Jesus declared he was the greatest prophet born among women. Amen. Praise God. And so his growth, his direction, his guidance came from a nurturing, loving mother. Praise God. And I thank God for that. And I thank God for the mothers in Zion, those mothers who pray through for the breakthrough, those mothers who see your potential and say, baby, you need to do this. They may even pull you to the side and correct you a little bit, but they see your potential in God. They see how the enemy is trying to come in and they try to block the devil through their good counsel. We thank God for the church mothers who stand with the pastors and try to undergird the work of the ministry and call people all the time. And, and we thank God for our church mother here at Hallelujah Temple and all the church mothers, all the mothers in Zion 
Zion, all those who are praying, all those who are fasting, all those who are seeking for children and for young people and for the church to grow and to develop and to become what God would have them to be. We thank God for those parents, those mothers who have birthed children, who are taking the time to, to train them now. And even during this virus, they're, they are teaching them and, and, and trying to do their jobs and teach the child and do a lot of different things. And God, we're just looking for the Lord to continue to pour out of his grace in their lives during this difficult season. We praise God for mothers. We praise God for the compassion. We praise God for these models. Sometimes we're looking at the bad models. We're looking at the bad boys, the bad girls, the people who are doing wicked things, the people who are negligent. But there are a lot of examples of individuals doing good things every day, everyday heroes. And mothers are everyday heroes. And we thank God for the mothers. We thank God for their influence. We thank God for their sacrifice. We thank God for their love. No way we can be where we are without a mother's love. And we praise God for them. Let us continue to pray for our mothers and the mothers in Zion. And let us keep our eyes on the Lord to strengthen them and encourage them at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you and praise you for our mothers. Thank you for those who are willing to adopt, those who are willing to intervene and intercede in the lives of others, whether they are the natural parent or not. Thank you, Lord God, for Pharaoh's daughter. Thank you for Elizabeth as an example. Thank you, Lord God, for all the mothers under the sound of my voice. And I pray that you will strengthen them and encourage them. Be the lifter up of their head. Let them know that they are a model of compassion, a model of influence, and that indeed, Lord, you are well pleased with them. And we thank you for the children, Lord. And I pray that the children will get a new revelation to honor their parents, honor their father and mother, that their days may be long upon the earth. We thank you for this day of celebration, a day of celebrating mothers. And I pray that you'll lift up their hearts and their heads. And even those who have lost their mother, let them know, Lord God, that you love them and you're with them and you care for them. We praise you in Jesus' name and we thank you. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I will call upon the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for he is worthy to be praised. Glory to God. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the for Lord. He is worthy to be for praised. He is worthy to be praised. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the for Lord. He is worthy to be for praised. He is worthy Come to on, be say. praised. I will call upon the Lord. I will hey. call upon the for Lord. He is worthy to be for praised. He is worthy to be I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the for Lord. He is worthy to be for praised. He is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The Lord reigns, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord reigns. Upon the for Lord is worthy to be for He is worthy to be. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the for Lord. He is worthy to be for He is worthy to be. So shall I be saved from my enemies? The Lord reign and blessed be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Love reigns and blessed be the rock and let the God. 
praise the Lord and happy Mother's Day. As we look at mothers and honor them on this Mother's Day 2020, one of the things that stands out to me most about my mother in particular, the mom of six, is the word sacrifice. Despite the twists and turns and the places that life took her, when she didn't have, she would do her best to make sure we had. She did her best to stay positive. She did her best to love and care for us, to teach us, to pray us through, to pray herself through situations. And I will never forget that. I will always love and cherish that. And for me, as a mom, sacrifice is something I realize is a big part of the role we have as mothers. Happy Mother's Day to all the beautiful mothers out there. One thing that I truly appreciate is a mother's ability to provide comfort when we need it most. Right now, the world is just so full of many things, but the comfort, love, and care that a mother provides is the greatest thing that a man could ever ask for. Uh, it's a blessing to the world. We love you. We support you. We are happy for you, and happy Mother's Day. Praise the Lord. I tell you, it's a time of celebration. It's a time of jubilee to lift up the wonderful women of God, the mothers of Zion, our church mothers, our, our spiritual mothers, our natural mothers, uh, the adoptive parents. We just thank God for mothers. And we want to encourage them. We want to lift them up through our love, through acts of compassion, through acts of kindness, being very tangible about what we do. I know I am what I am by my mother's love. My father died when I was two, three years old. And so her love made a big difference, a major difference, and her choices made a big difference in my life. And so I'm going to continue to be praying for you and your relationship with your mother and your relationship with your children. And we're just going to believe that we're going to move to a whole new level of compassion and influence even during this season. Know that we care for you and we love you here at Hallelujah Temple. I look forward for our doors being open, hopefully sometime soon, and hopefully you'll come by and visit us when that occurs. Also, thank God for each and every one of you who have been sending in your checks and who have been supporting this ministry electronically. You can download the Givelify app and look up Hallelujah Temple in Park Forest, Illinois, or you can send it to Hallelujah Temple, 1 Dogwood Street, Park Forest, Illinois, 604 Six, six. God bless you and may the Lord keep you. Let us pray. Lord, I pray you'll strengthen your people, encourage them, be the lifter up of their head. Lord, through your Holy Spirit, affirm in their lives that they are influencers and difference makers. Lord, let them continue to shape and mold our young people and our children that they may become all that you will have them to be. We thank you, Lord God, for the love and the influence of mothers and bless them this day in Jesus' name. And we thank you now. Amen. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah Temple is a religious, non-profit organization. Our heartfelt thanks goes to everyone who continues to support this ministry, whether through Givelify or by mail at 1 Dogwood Street, Park Forest, Illinois, 60466. Your contribution to Hallelujah Temple helps further the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Stay connected to us through our Facebook page for more words from our leadership.